frozen war. Right, so this starts off as a 6-4 rock groove, um, and I'm playing, well, I'm playing fours, but I guess I really should say I'm playing sixes, um, if that makes any sense. Um, how does one start a song? You can just count it in, all come on the downbeat. Um, I usually like to give some sort of lead-in fill, and sometimes these lead-in fills can be very convoluted, or they can be very simple. That's just down to, that's called production. That's down to choice. Um, for this one, um, I decided just a very simple pickup, and it's one of my favorites to do. It's, it's simple, but it's very effective. One tom-tom, two kick drums, and one snare drum, sometimes with a cymbal. Uh, it seems to work on most tracks, actually. So uh, we're in the studio, we've got a click, and then as soon as we're all ready, I'll count it in, and I would start like this. One, two... So that's our opening groove. The next section comes right down, acoustic guitars come in, so I just play a light cymbal with the, my tom-tom backbeats, which I'm very fond of doing. It's sonically uh, a lovely thing to hear, fun to mix, um, and it leaves plenty of room for lots of other instruments, like this. etc. You'll hear the hi-hat is kind of ghosting behind, which instead of, I, I could play it very cleanly, no hi-hat at all, like this. Or I could play it with the hi-hat playing the opposite beat, kind of like off beats, and so it creates this uh, this wash, uh, which I think is just a, a cool sound, like this. Both work equally as well, but for this, a little bit of hi-hat splashiness, it kind of glues the whole groove together. I think it's kind of, kind of fun. Um, and then a build up into the verse and the verse is, is all in four, very simple, very straight, just one kick drum every two beats, but I intersperse with a, a double beat occasionally because it works very well with the vocals. Um, so very simple, simple groove, but a little bit of spice in there, a little bit like this. And the next section goes into a 7-4. Very simple, just a couple of bars, and we get back to verse two. Same groove again. Um, the chorus is a halftime section. And so I open up a lot, go up onto the cymbal bell, and spice it up with a few fills. A little bit like this. Now we get to the instrumental sections. 
there are three different sections. Now the first, it goes back to six, but I guess you could feel it more as a three because that's the way the phrase works, but it doesn't, it's exactly the same. It's either one, two, three, one, two, three, or one, two, three, four, five. It really doesn't matter. You can feel it either way. We get into this kind of three feel, uh, the guitars do 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 and I thought well let's do something really different here and let's place the backbeat uh, in a different position too so it's like uh, one, two, one, two. second instrumental section is um, a beautiful guitar solo by Alex Sill and what I'm doing is I go to all tom-toms. In fact the only thing really keeping the time is the hi-hat, the open splashy hi-hat with a few bass drum hits. So it's a bit like this. I think the lead into the uh, that section is a tom fill, right just kind of doubles like this. Careful choices of the tom-toms, when you have a lot of them, is very important. Um, generally, they won't interfere harmonically with the music, because they're basically atonal sounds. But whether you go down and whether you go up um, is really depending on how you hear the changes. To me, the changes that we were using, that seemed to be the nicest way to do it. As the chord changes, I don't really want to play the same toms. I want to actually change how, what I'm playing tonally as well. Um, so that's how I came up with that. It's a, just a very natural thing. I don't really think about it that much as we're running the song and think, oh, that might be a nice way or this will be this way, maybe. Um, and then the third section, we go back to the three section, pretty much what I just played. Um, and then that leads us into the reintro. And then we get to the outro, the end section. Um, when we tracked this, I just assumed it would be a fade. We hadn't really even spoken about it yet. We hadn't got that far in the production <laughs> department. Um, and uh, so we're going around at the end, I'm playing this groove, which is sixes or fours, four time type groove. Um, and uh, we're going around and around the end. Um, we didn't have all the keyboard ideas, the, the, the Derek Sherinian added those afterwards. Um, and so generally when I think there's enough recorded of a fade, I then usually just start having fun, messing around. And that's what I did. But we were decided to actually keep it all. And thankfully, we did an ending. I don't know how we did, but we did an ending. It wasn't planned. Uh, we just somehow looked at each other and got through it. So anyway, this is the idea. Um, start using, start off with single bass drum, then double bass drum, and then having fun. That's the end of Frozen War.